My name is Camelia Smith. I am a physician and OB-GYN here in Dallas. I am the founder of Charleston House Gynecology. Um, thank you. I always say we are not just another medical practice, and our mission is to champion a better healthcare experience for women across the stages of their lives. As a woman, I fear the diagnosis of ovarian cancer. It took me about five minutes in med school to say, well, that's what I definitely don't want. As a gynecologist, I really fear missing the diagnosis of ovarian cancer. It's another one as a doctor to be five minutes in med school to say, I have very poor screening tools for that. And my hands on a pelvic exam just probably isn't going to cut it. And it's something that I think about a lot of times when I do an exam on a woman. But I'm excited to tell you that that is changing. I am a Chief Operating Officer for a publicly traded company called Aspire Women's Health, whose mission is to eradicate late stage of ovarian cancer and, and really all gynecological disease that's starting with ovarian cancer. Uh, I co-founded and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of a nonprofit that works to educate the non-oncologic physicians on the signs and symptoms of breast and ovarian and the connection of those diseases. We created a medical curriculum and, and actively try to ensure that physicians who maybe aren't trained in gynecological disease have an opportunity to learn about those things. And when I think about what happens to women as they go into the, the doctor's offices and they have a, a risk for ovarian cancer, there's so much that we can't do. We don't have the tests, we don't have the ability to do what we can do in other cancers. And so that's how I landed here. And although we have a lot of work to do, we're not close to a screening tool, nobody is. Um, the mission is to try to start with awareness and then move our way towards developing a pap smear for ovarian cancer because a pap smear does not detect ovarian cancer. But there's going to make sure that I understand all that's going on so that I can protect myself and I can be here for the people that I love and the career that I love. And that is the start of all of it. So I'm, I'm here to hope that I can help create a call to action around this horrifically horrible disease in ovarian cancer and maybe start the educational movement to say that it, it isn't just ovarian cancer. The connection between breast and ovarian, pancreatic, melanoma, it all exists and it's all very important. So as we approach Thanksgiving and National Family History Day, this is really important that we bring this up at these dinner table conversations and understand what did grandpa die from? What did grandma die from? How is it all connected? And maybe I need to be responsible to put some of these pieces together. And then what I can promise you is on the other side of industry, we are gonna work tires tirelessly to get ourselves to a place of, of having some early diagnostics and changing the future. So thank you for having us today. I hope you enjoy the program and um, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Kylie Zellner and Spire for having us have cancer. And I say all the time, the likelihood of you having cancer is so small. But if we are not very aggressive in looking for ovarian cancer, we won't find it. So we have to have a very low special to look for it and a high index of suspicion. So bloating, pain, or pressure that lasts more than two weeks is something that you should think about. You should call your doctor. Your doctor, unfortunately, does not always do the right thing, and it's not because she's terrible or she's mean or she's stupid. It's because there are constraints in our system, but you need to advocate for yourselves. I'm sad you need to advocate for yourselves, but you do. And you should ask for a pelvic ultrasound. Because without a pelvic ultrasound, there's really no way to find ovarian cancer. It's not enough for her to say, you know what, let me just feel your belly, let me do a pelvic exam. That is a terrible exam that does not actually find anything. So if there's one nugget you can take away from this today, besides don't be fearful, is bloating, pain, pressure that lasts more than two weeks, or what you think are recurrent urinary tract infections that actually turn out not to be urinary tract infections, meaning negative urine cultures, call your doctor. I'm sure if you say, I would like a pelvic ultrasound, they will not say no. The constraints, by the way, are things like insurance doesn't always cover it. Your doctor doesn't always have readily, readily easy access to an ultrasound machine. So this is the reason why it's not always done, but it can be done. And the truth is that, especially in this audience, we are, I suspect, privileged enough that if we have to cover our ultrasounds, we would. It is worth it. That's how we found mine, through an ultrasound, which led to an MRI, which led to surgery. And again, here I am five years later. And my um, intention in the next 20 years 
is that we are going to not have to call this the silent killing. We're not going to have to say, gosh, ovarian cancer is so devastating. We're going to be able to view it the way we should be viewing mammoth, um, breast cancer. We should be viewing it as a really crappy thing to go through, but something that we can get through and be okay. So I want you to be proactive and not paranoid. I really want you to follow up and advocate for yourselves, which makes me deeply sad. I always say like when it comes to my teachers, for my kids, I don't want to advocate for myself because I just want them to take care of my kids. But we have to keep in check with education and with healthcare. So you do need to advocate for yourself. Find a doctor that you love. Find a doctor that you collaborate with. If you don't like your doctor right now, find someone else. I know that stinks, I know that's hard, but it's so valuable. At best, it's just a really fun conversation once a year with your doctor. And at worst, it's gonna be a time where you need her and you wanna know that she's gonna do the right thing for you. And it's almost Thanksgiving. Talk about your family history, ask grandma and grandpa, ask your cousins. I guarantee your mom and dad probably don't know about it, so you're gonna help educate them. This is a really important thing. Thank you.